You're listening to the Bryant Land Country Podcast, hosted by AB3. Welcome to another bonus eps of the Bryant Land Country Podcast. I am your host, AB3, and this is a bonus episode of the Bryant Land Country Podcast. Thank you for downloading and subscribing to our podcast this week on the bonus episodes. I got a couple things that I want to touch on um, that I really didn't want to get bogged down in to the regular podcast with. Um, and the first of those things is a very interesting article that was on the Meat Eater site, themeateater.com. Patrick Durkin is the author, and he wrote a very brilliant uh, article. And as I have said on many occasions, a lot of times what people don't understand is media is a business. And the business of media is to get you to click, to watch, uh, to discuss. And the title of Patrick's article is Hunting to White has done exactly that. It's got people talking, uh, message boards or uh, chat groups, whatever you uh, want to call them nowadays, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, a lot of people have been talking about this article and what I have found with it is just the title alone is stirring people up. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, what I have always said, you got to be smart, okay? If the article, you got to look past the title, you, uh, excuse me, you got to look past the title, okay? Uh, actually read the article. I reposted it on my Bryantland.com or excuse me, my Bryantland Facebook page um, because as a person who is in media, I went and checked the article out. And I mean, there's nothing in that he's saying in there that if you look around that nothing he's saying is not true. Or the stuff he's saying is not far-fetched. A lot of the article is talking about conservation, talking about preserving the heritage, preserving hunting for future generations, um, recruiting new hunters. I mean, these are all things that, you know, we in the hunting community should be about. But where a lot of people, you know, get their feathers ruffled and get all in a bunch, anytime you start talking about color, uh, people don't like it, okay? Um, but the fact of the matter is, if you look around, you know, unfortunately, color affects a lot of things in our society, especially in this country. I mean, this country was created, you know, a long, long time ago, supposedly as a melting pot, all right? And if you look at the article, there was one excerpt for me that spoke to me personally, uh, spoke to me personally. God, I can't talk late at night. Uh, and it's a quote uh, from Mr. Dillard in the article. Uh, Mr. Dillard is a black hunter, okay? Um, I believe, let me just scroll down here. A little bit. Like I said, you can guys can read this article on my uh, Bryantland page or you can go to the um, meateater.com. But a lifelong Southern hunter, Rick Dillard, an African-American, hunts down in Mississippi. And one of the things that he said that really stuck out, stuck out to me, we need more inclusiveness, Dillard said. If you're a black hunter and you watch TV hunting shows or pick up an outdoor magazine or catalog, you feel intimidated when no one looks like you. The hunting industry has done a wonderful job of including women and children, but I sense discomfort about including people of color. I mean, that take is spot on. I mean, if you look at any of the, 
major mainstream network, sportsman channel, pursued outdoor channel, you don't see a lot of people that look like myself. Okay, there's maybe one or two guys that have broke the ceiling um, and have shows on there. And that's, you know, kudos to those guys for being able to break that ceiling. But if you just look around and if you are out in the fields hunting, you know, in the blinds, things of that nature, you don't see a lot of people that look like yourself. Okay. Now, does that mean black people don't hunt? No, it's not. Okay. Um, a lot of black people that hunt don't do it for the sport, don't do it for the show, don't want to take a whole bunch of pictures. You know, it's either something that's been a part of their family and they just kind of share it, you know, with their family and friends. Um, a lot of people still do it, you know, as a part of survival, uh, as a supplement to what they are bringing in from their grocery stores or whatnot. And they're also farmers and they also hunt as well as being part of of a farming community, okay? So there is some despair, uh, disparages that, you know, black people don't hunt. But speaking specifically to what Mr. Dillard is talking about, we're talking about inclusiveness in the hunting community, inclusiveness on mainstream media channels, magazines, you know, uh, models, of people of color, you know, women, people of color that hunt, um, you know, just more inclusiveness in general. And you guys have heard me talk about Bryantland and this podcast and this podcast being uh, one of the most diverse or the most diverse podcasts in the industry. And we take pride into that. You know, diversity is not a bad thing. You know, when people hear diversity a lot of time or inclusiveness, they want to roll their eyes. The fact of the matter is if we want to continue to preserve our sport and preserve what we love, we got to be more inclusive. You know, these companies can't be afraid to do business with brands like myself or other black owned brands or black hunters or Latino hunters, Asian hunters, you know, people of color, like these companies have got to stop shying away from, them. period, point blank, okay? I mean, I've on, I have on good accord talked to someone who is in a meeting in a boardroom with one of the major networks and was, was told flat out, you know, this is not something – that we want people don't want to see this i mean now the good thing about the days and the times that we live in with this technology you don't necessarily need the mainstream to do your own thing it's a lot of work um it's going to take some time but you can definitely nowadays with the equipment that is available to us you know phones video cameras you can bypass the mainstream and build your own brand, kind of like what I'm doing um, and what others are doing. But at the end of the day, just like anything, people want an opportunity and people want people to see the value in the work and the art, if you will, of what you're putting out. And the same thing goes for hunting fishing, outdoors. There are a lot of people out here, people of color, making great content and they need to be showcased and put on a major platform. So uh, let's do better about that. Now, another little thing that I kind of came across while just messing around the other day, shooting my bow I took some uh, tape to kind of help with the grip on my release, on my release from my bow. Um, I found that, you know, a lot of times these new releases and stuff, uh, the metal releases, they're very smooth, um, especially if you just use like a thumb release or something like that. Like you don't have a strap to your wrist. Um, it can get kind of slippery, especially with gloves. Uh, so it's just kind of like a little DIY hack 
uh, do it yourself hack. I just got some uh, tape, taped up a couple of areas of the release, and I had a better grip. Um, does it help you shoot better? Eh, I don't know. Maybe. Um, but it definitely helps you to have a better grip. You don't have to worry about slipping. It's just another thing that, uh, or you, I should say, you don't have to worry about your uh, release slipping out of your hand. Um, tighter grip on a release, better shots, maybe. I don't know. I tried it. I like it. I'm going to do it out in the woods. Uh, you can give it a try, too. I'll post a picture on my uh, Instagram so you guys can uh, take a look at it and have at it. Now, sports-wise, a topic that kind of caught my eye earlier this past week, Magic Johnson was on ESPN on First Take, and he basically outed what was going on with the Lakers and why he abruptly left. And now if you're familiar with the story, you know, Laker – uh, Magic Johnson was the GM of the Lakers, you know, instrumental in getting LeBron to come to the Lakers. And basically, th- before the season was over with, uh, called it quits. There was a lot of internal strife going on. He felt like there was a lot of backstabbing going on. He couldn't run the organization the way that he wanted to. So basically, he said, fuck it. I don't need it. You know, Magic is a very uh, successful businessman. Um, and he, from his words, he told, you know, Jeannie Buss, the owner of the Lakers that he would not, uh, be, he would not quit running his businesses just to do the uh, job of general manager for the Lakers. Uh, he makes too much money, uh, to just give up his businesses in which, you know, all of us could definitely understand that, but I found it interesting that, a guy who really doesn't have a lot of basketball experience outside of being an agent, talking about Rob Palenka, uh, would be someone who would be so influential and kind of like, you know, planting seeds and talking behind someone's back. I mean, he's Magic Johnson, okay? He's one of the greatest players to ever play the game. Uh, he was putting together a pretty strong team, I think, in my opinion, Um, but a lot of people said that it was petty and magic needed to be a bigger man. And he was wrong for, you know, airing things out like he did on that first take interview. And I mean, I urge you to go and check it out if you haven't, but I see no problem with it. Guys backstabbing, talking behind my back. Not only am I going to confront him, but I'm also going to put it out there. It's like, Hey, yeah, you know what? I don't need this. And luckily for Magic, he is in a position, you know, that very few people uh, can be in. He's one of those people that I like to say he has kissed my ass money. Okay, so he doesn't really need it, doesn't need the money, uh, doesn't need the headache. And he seems to be a little bit more at peace uh, since he's not worried about having to deal with the drama in good old Los Angeles. Last thing this week on this bonus ep, this weekend coming up, Memorial Day weekend. Hope you guys have a great Memorial Day weekend. I will be working doing Milwaukee Brewers baseball, but I will also make time to check out the AEW All Elite Wrestling pay-per-view, Double or Nothing. They've been talking about this thing for months. Uh, Cody Rhodes, the son of Dusty Rhodes, has started a wrestling promotion It is very well funded. Uh, Billionaire uh, Mr. Khan uh, also owns the Jacksonville Jaguars. Is bankrolling this thing. So he's got some money behind him. And in any business adventure, anything that you do, you want to have the little, you want to have the coins, you want to have the cash behind you. So he's definitely got a big bankroll. They got their first pay per view. Uh, Jr. Jim Ross is going to do play by play for those guys. They've signed uh, some pretty good hot independent wrestlers. They got some top names like Chris Jericho. Uh, like I said, Cody Rhodes is one of the uh, three. One of the three uh, guys that is like the main. Uh, leader the main uh, guy in the promotion so I'm going to check it out it'll be good as a wrestling fan to see 
you know, some competition for WWE. Hopefully these guys can be uh, competition or serve up an alternative um, just to be have another outlet um, in professional wrestling for those of us who are professional wrestling fans. Um, I also read that they secured a television deal uh, on TNT. Very interesting that Turner uh, is getting back into the wrestling business, but apparently they will have uh, some uh, major TV distribution on uh, TNT. So I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, this weekend, AEW, double or nothing, I'm going to check it out. Well, turkey season's closed uh, or closing in a lot of places. So I know a lot of people are going to be winding down, um, probably rest a little bit. I know I've already started doing uh, – or keeping up my supplemental feeding, kind of moving feeders around for my deer herd out at my property. Uh, I've been shooting my bow. I'm waiting to get uh, one of my bows back that um, I got some strings, new strings put on it. I can't wait to get it back and start back shooting it. But um, with turkey season winding down, hopefully on the summer, I'll get a chance to go and shoot some hogs. Uh, we're going to try to put a couple things together where I can go on some hog hunts this summer. But, yeah, man, hope you guys had a great turkey season. Feel free to tag me on uh, Instagram, at Official Bryantland, in some of your turkey photos or uh, send me, you know, some of your turkey, fomo, turkey photos. Jesus. Uh, and I will repost them. Uh, like I say, tag me on uh, Instagram at official Bryantland with those. Uh, this is enough spitballing that I need to do for a bonus episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, just random thoughts that I get to kind of kick off on my head. Uh, email me, ab3bryantland at gmail.com or hit me up at official Bryantland on Instagram or Bryantland on Facebook. Uh, if you have any thoughts about some of the stuff that was covered in this bonus episode, like I said, we're always open to good, respectful dialogue. You definitely don't have to agree with everything that I say. And if you got a uh, opinion or you got a thought on this bonus episode, uh, just make sure to hit us up. Uh, do it respectfully, or I will let you know that you're being disrespectful. Uh, we don't play that shit around here. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and sign off on this bonus episode. Hope you guys enjoy it. Make sure you check out the Bryantland Country Podcast wherever you consume your podcast audio. We got plenty of episodes. We have 20 regular episodes that we've done so far. Very proud of that. Not to mention four bonus episodes. So make sure you go check out the Bryantland Country Podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review. I'm going to get out of here. I'll catch up with y'all later on. AB3, Bryantland Country Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Bryantland Country Podcast, hosted by AB3. Please leave us a positive review and five-star rating on iTunes. Be sure to check out our podcast section on our website, bryantlandcountry.com, for previous podcasts. Check us out on Instagram at Official Bryant Land and Twitter at 3 Bryant Land. This has been an AB3 Media Production. Join us next time for another edition of the Bryant Land Country Podcast.